coming up on this week's Stiefel Snow Show. We'll start with Michaela Schifrin's build-up to winning her 94th World Cup title with an unscheduled trip from Austria to Switzerland as the two-time Olympic gold medalist continues her climb towards 100 World Cup wins. Next to Ben and Switzerland, where reigning Olympic silver medalist Ryan Cochran Siegel captured his best results of the season so far on the marquee Laberhorn course. Then to Ottenmark Zockensee in Austria, where American Lauren Masuga captured her first ever top 10 finish in women's Super G. to another edition of the Stiefel Snow Show after what was a dramatic week of alpine skiing. I'm Cara Banks, happy to bring you all the latest in snow sports from around the globe. So where have the Stiefel US Ski and Snowboard team been in action this week? Well, the men's alpine team took to the famed Laberhorn track in Wengen, an epic 2.7 mile course at the foothills of the Eiger Mountain. While the women's team began with their World Cup speed races in idyllic Altenmark Zockensee, before the tech races took place at night in Flakau, Austria, the most recent setting for Michaela Schifrin's ongoing slalom battle with Slovakian Petra Volhova. Schifrin had been recovering from a cold that forced her not to compete in Zockensee to, quote, recharge her batteries. But before traveling to Flakau, she got news that her longtime boyfriend Alexander and Mock Kilda had endured a nasty crash on the Laberhorn in Wengen and would be airlifted to hospital in Bern, Switzerland. So along with her family, Schifrin rushed to his side to discover her Norwegian, quote, king had sustained a couple of season-ending injuries. Fortunately, no fractures and with an outlook focused on recovery, the American returned to Austria to catch up on rest ahead of her first race in nearly 10 days. The two 28-year-old friendly rivals who have each won three slalom races in the World Cup this season would once again go head-to-head -head in Flakau. Volhova had the edge in run one by a mere seven hundredths of a second, leaving the title all to ski for in the second run. Here's how our Steve Schlanger and Peekaboo Street called it. Now Michaela Schifrin. No one has won more here in Flakau, targeting her fifth slalom win here on this hill. Her fourth slalom win this season and sixth overall World Cup win of the year. Trying to stay high and early on those gates. Definitely a little bit choppy. She felt that. She knows she's got to make up for that. So now she's just got to ski a little bit more risky line through the middle here. It's a tight set, a rhythm she likes. Good job in the undergate. Lots of pressure on the downhill ski. Carried a lot of momentum through that. Not many skiers have another gear like Schifrin late in a course. She can hit the gas and pick up time where nobody else is able to. Yeah, it's true. She's just so smart tactically, and so she picks one or two turns where she can really generate momentum as opposed to just maintain it. And Michaela Schifrin. Into the lead with just Volhova left to go. A blistering effort for the American. And now Petra Volhova, final skier of the evening, the leader after the first run. Looking to win on this hill for the fourth time. Win in slalom for the fourth time this year. The tightest lead she's had this season in a slalom over Michaela Schifrin. Can she manage this moment? Each skier has a specific way of keeping their skis moving down into the next turn and not letting what happens with the upper body affect that. And this is one lady who has a Ooh. bag full of She got wide on her. She got wide, but she kept the pressure on her downhill ski coming through that delay. Therefore, the momentum carried, and that's why she kind of was back going into those next two gates. And she's lost the lead. Four one hundreds back. Not many have recovered time late. Can she be one of the few? Schifrin leaning at the bottom. Final pitch coming up for Volhova. Petra Volhova in the second. And Michaela Schifrin with her 94th career World Cup win.
Michaela gave an enthusiastic wave of appreciation to the electric crowd before taking that podium. It included reigning GS Olympic gold medalist Sarah Hector from Sweden taking her first ever podium in slalom. It had been an emotional few days for the champ. Do you want to say something? <laughs> Let's start it like this. Uh, <laughs> no, really, really proud of this evening and very thankful for my whole team. These last days have been very challenging. They've been so supportive and helped me go see Alex. And uh, thank you guys all for cheering, really. I know there's a lot of <laughs> I know there's a lot of Slovakia fans in the crowd. Um, yeah, I'm sorry for that tonight, but um, thank you for cheering anyway. <laughs> Just an unthinkable few days for the American, really, who later revealed it felt like she'd lived a thousand lives and she wasn't the one who endured a high-speed ski crash. She admitted her mindset, though, was to make the slalom race worth it if she was going to race rather than be by Alex's side. 81 of Michaela's now 94 World Cup wins have come in slalom, equaling the legendary Swedish alpine skier Ingemar Stenmark for the most in history. Well, after the break, Olympian Marco Sullivan joins us in studio to talk about the volatile week in Wengen, the performance of the U.S. ski team, and gives us a look ahead to Kitzbühel. We'll be right back on the Stiefel Snow Show. Here's a ski racer's view of the majestic Laberhorn, the longest, oldest, and fastest on the downhill circuit, with a starting altitude nearly 7,600 feet above sea level. Its pitches, twists, and turns demand a rapid and efficient technique. It's truly a classic, set in the Bernese Oberland. As we welcome you back to the Stiefel Snow Show, where it's now time to catch up with Ryan Cochran Siegel, otherwise known as RCS. A Vermont native, the reigning Olympic silver medalist in Super G has lofty ambitions, not surprisingly, as he's following in the footsteps of his renowned skiing family, which includes his Olympic gold medal winning mum, Barbara Ann. I got into ski racing through my family. I'm a second generation skiing Cochran. My mom, Barbara Ann Cochran, won the 1972 Winter Olympics in support of Japan. Grew up skiing at my small ski area in Richmond, Vermont, Cochran Ski Area. Family run, owned, operated. Well, he, he started skiing when he could walk. First kind of official race was when he was four. He just loved racing. It was actually an NBC reporter that pointed out that it had been 50 years since I'd won my medal that he'd be racing at Beijing. And Ryan Cochran Siegel has been waiting a long time for a run like this. Ooh. Just four hundreds back into the second position. What a run by RCS. You know, I was so ecstatic. I was just so excited. I don't remember what we said. My phone has been blowing up. She's she's still better than me. She has the gold. I only have the silver. So here are the skiing Cochrans, where as you can see, Ryan Cochran Siegel is a couple of generations removed from grandparents Mickey and Ginny, who started it all. This fabled family have become something of a legendary institution, with 10 Cochrans named the U.S. ski team over the years, World Cup and World Championship winners, not to mention Olympic medalists among them. The skiing Cochrans claim a deserving place in a storied skiing legacy. And Stiefel U.S. ski team's RCS took a sixth-place finish in last Thursday's men's downhill in Wengen, Switzerland. That's his best result of the season so far and an impressive showing on this awe-inspiring course with a reputation for speed. The makeup race from the previously cancelled slew at Beaver Creek in December showcased beautiful Swiss weather and stable track conditions, providing a winning combination for home hero Marco Odemark who captured first place, marking the Phenom's first ever World Cup win in downhill. Completing the podium were France's Cyprian Sarazan and Norway's Alexander Amok Kilda two days before his dramatic crash. 
The following day, Cyprian Zarazan rose to the top. He's a true breakout star this season. The 29-year-old claimed his first World Cup Super G victory in Wengen last Friday with a ferocious run of 1 minute and 47.75 seconds, worthy of besting Marco Odemot and of Mott Kilda, who took second and third podium spots. It was a supportive celebration for these companionable rivals and marked a second World Cup win for Sarazan after triumphing in downhill in Bormio, Italy, late December. While well, Wengen lived up to his treacherous reputation for the men's Super G, as France's Alexis Pantarel took a dramatic fall during his run that resulted in a season-ending ACL tear. But he was able to take comfort aside his newborn daughter, Olamp. Just days old, he posted, quote, the best painkiller. Thanks for all your kind words. Well, with a bold, intrepid, and maybe even daring display in Wengen last Saturday, 26-year-old Marco Odemont clocked a 2-minute and 25.64 second downhill win, taking his speed skiing to new heights. Ultimately, pumping his fists in a gratifying show of sheer excitement. That, though, was soon majorly tempered as Odemot's friend and rival Alex Kilda caught up in a fast-tumbling slide and ultimate crash that would end his season. The Norwegian was ultimately airlifted to nearby Bern Hospital, where longtime girlfriend Michaela Schifrin travelled in from her schedule in Austria to be by his side. And back on the lava horn, it was Odemot in first on home snow, Cyprian Zarazan in second, and Italy's Dominic Paris in third. Let's move to our fast facts powered by iFit. Welcome to the world of intelligent fitness. Perhaps the most harrowing section of the Lava Horn course is the Hanek Shoe Straight, where, as you can see, American Ryan Cochran Siegel clocked the top speed in the downhill last week. Nobody yet, though, close to France's Johan Clary's record-setting 100.6 mile per hour speed back in 2013. Someone who was there then, by the way, joins us right now. It is time to welcome in an Olympic alpine skier for Team USA. That is Marco Sullivan. Marco, thanks for joining us this week. Thanks for having me. There's a lot to unpack after uh, the men's uh, week at the Laberhorn, of course. But let's start with RCS. I mentioned a career best for him, top 10 in, in both the downhill races. Do you think we're seeing maybe the best of, of the 31-year-old? Yeah, I feel like Ryan's really coming around. He's started a little bit slow this season, but you talked about his family history. His fundamental skills on skis are, are second to none. He's so good, and he's been pretty open about when his, when his mindset is correct, his equipment is on, you know, he feels super confident. When that's a little bit off, maybe he's a little bit off the back, but I think with those good results in Vengen, hopefully he's really heating up for the season. Yeah, always nice to have that Olympic silver medal in your back pocket, of course. Absolutely. <laughs> these few seasons. Let's speak a bit about the, the slightly controversial issue, I suppose, of the added race from Beaver Creek. You know, a few of the athletes, Marco Odomat, one of them said this perhaps wasn't the place to add a speed race. What are your thoughts on, on what took place with those big three days? I, I, the fact of the matter is Wengen is the longest downhill on the tour, two and a half minutes. It's so physically challenging that to add on another race, that meant the guys were racing actually five days in a row with two training runs, a downhill, a Super G, and another downhill. And we saw Kilde had that crash on the final downhill, and they call it the Zeal S. It's three really demanding turns coming into the finish, and your legs are just on fire, and I think he just ran out of gas. Well, up next, it's another one of the classics in Kitzbühel. I know some people regard this as one of the most important World Cup races of the season, and you've got some experience competing there. So tell us, why is that? Yeah, I was lucky enough to race in Kitzbühel, I think, a dozen times, and it's definitely the, the highlight of the season. Maybe for most seasons that don't have an Olympics, the Kitzbühel is like the one where all the racers are super focused. Um, the start house in Kitzbühel, they've, people call it like the quietest start house on the World Cup because the guys, there's not a lot of joking around and, and kidding each other like there is at other stops. Like guys are focused, they're super serious because this course just has a lot of consequences. It's really quite dangerous. If you win Kitzbühel, you're instantly a legend of the sport more or less and you get your own gondola actually that there's a dedicated gondola for this race track called the Hanan Kanban. American Darren Ralves has a gondola, so that the Americans are hoping to 
fired up this weekend. Now, I've got to talk, obviously, about the women's side and Michaela Schifrin. How can I not? Kind of amazing what she did, winning Flacow after rushing to be by Kilda's side. Now, 100 World Cup wins, you could say, definitely in sight. It's kind of amazing, isn't it, even in the face of challenges, that she continues to dominate. What do you make of her seemingly kind of unwavering determination? Uh, I mean, Kayla's definitely the, the gold standard of our sport, you know, with women and, and the men. Just she's been so consistent over the years. It's so hard to just keep winning and winning. There's so many variables in ski racing, and she makes it look easy, especially in Flacco last week. A lot of people were doubting if she could, you know, after that week she had to come back and ski her best, and she just put in a dominating performance. It was so impressive to watch. Yeah, it was incredible, and I loved her kind of mental attitude around the whole thing. Thanks so much for joining us today, Mark. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Cara. All right, stay with us after the break. Olympic silver medalist Jalen Kopp joins us from Canada to discuss her incredible results this season and her freestyle skiing family. It's all to come on the Steeple Snow Show. American freestyle skier Jalen Kopp has been rising through the ranks in mogul skiing since her first fist competitions back in 2010. With both parents previously on the professional moguls tour, she has said skiing is, quote, in her blood. And to find out more, she joins us now on the Stiefel Snow Show. So thanks for being with us, Jalen, as we welcome her in. What a wonderful season you're having. Let's start with that, shall we? Three podiums, a win, a second and a third. Tell us, what do you put the consistency down to this year? Um, yeah, I mean, I've just been having a lot of fun skiing this year, just really zoning in on my strengths, playing to my speed, my skiing, and trying to bring in a few harder degree of difficulty jumps this year and um, kind of just working on that consistency. I guess it's worked out so far. So it's been really fun. It's been so fun to watch not only you, but also your <laughs> teammates. Tell us, how strong do you think the U.S. women's freestyle team is in general right now? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we have such a dominating presence out there on the women's side. Um, and we have for a long time. Like, we've had such a strong, stacked girls team. And I think this year, what's really put us above where we have been is that consistency of all of the girls on the team. Just being able to put down run after run all day long. Um, and yeah, it's just been so fun to be a part of such a dominating women's team where any of us and all of us could be on the podium every competition. Well, we've enjoyed watching you guys perform seven events in the <laughs> season so far, but let's look ahead. This time you've got not one but two World Cups coming up on U.S. soil this winter, New Hampshire, of course, and Utah. Tell us, how excited are you to get a chance to perform in front of a home crowd soon? Yeah, I'm so excited. I mean, Deer Valley is my favorite competition every year. You know, the crowd that we see there is unbelievable. There are so many friends and families and J signs out there in the crowd that it just, it's just so fun and just energizing to be a part of. And having a second U.S. event this year is also going to be amazing. We've competed at U.S. Nationals at Waterville in the past. And they've had a really good course, so really excited for a new U.S. stop for us. Plus, everyone's always excited to see you, the reigning silver medalist of moguls from <laughs> Beijing. Has that given you a lot more confidence now when competing? Oh, for sure. Um, yeah, sometimes, I mean, before events, I'll, I have, like, this highlight video that kind of includes my part of my Olympic run and my claim at the bottom and I'll watch that prior to the event and it just gets me so amped up and excited to ski because that event I had some of the most fun competing I've ever had before and it just kind of brings me back into that same mindset. Yeah, definitely a memory worth reminding <laughs> yourself of. Let's speak a bit about your family, Jalen. I mentioned your parents' former careers in the sport. Just how young did they start you on skis and did you feel like this was always your destiny? Um, I don't know if I always felt like it was my destiny, but I think unlike a lot of kids or my friends, I always knew that going into skiing as a career was an option because of them. Um, and I think they just put me on skis as soon as I could walk. Um, they're both still competing 
on the ProMogo Tour when I was born, so um, that was just kind of the easiest thing to do, I think. <laughs> You're a super talented sportswoman all around. Let me tell you, it is amazing <laughs> to watch you and what you do in Mogul. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us this week, and good luck the rest of the season. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. All right, that was Jalen Hart with us on the Steeple Snow Show. Still to come, we'll reveal how Lauren Masuga managed a career best performance last week and find out why Jesse Diggins decided to go paragliding. Well, Park City's Lauren Masuga said recently that she has been, quote, working so hard and it's showing. Well, since her first World Cup start back in 2021, her best finish came in a Super G in Val d'Isère early this season. That was until last week. Calling her run everything she had been trying to do, an astonished Lauren Masuga skied into the finish after her Super G run this past Sunday. She would look around for the leaderboard and the 48th racer to ski the course had placed 10th, a career best result for her. Reaction among family and friends was energized. Masuga's sisters, Ali and Sam, both posted their congratulations. Lauren later revealing, it's that little bit of confidence to be like, I know that I've done it, and now I can do it again. Meanwhile, Jesse Diggins and members of the cross-country team have had a busy and successful season so far coming off tour de ski, so now it's time for a recovery camp. But what does that look like? Well, paragliding, apparently, in Italy. Jesse Diggins posted about charging batteries and Sammy Smith's I Survived Tour de Ski. Now let's take a look at our upcoming broadcast schedule on Peacock and NBC. Don't miss all the action from Kitzbühel in men's downhill and slalom. And then, of course, our next episode on CNBC. That will be Saturday, January 27th at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. Also, make a note for January 28th, where we'll bring you United's Waterville Valley Freestyle World Cup from New Hampshire. It's been an absolute pleasure, as always, being with you here today on the Stiefel Snow Show. I'm Cara Banks. We'll see you next time.